America's mightiest warships find themselves under the watchful eyes of Chinese vessels. This delicate encounter signifies more than just ships passing in the night. It's a complex test of military might, cutting-edge technology, and international law. But what truly happens in these tense encounters? What unfolds when a Chinese spy ship shadows a U.S. Navy carrier strike group? When an unknown vessel appears on a U.S. carrier's radar, a well-rehearsed sequence of actions begins. The bridge crew's first priority is to determine the identity and intent of the approaching vessel. Using advanced radar systems and high-powered optics, they gather initial data on the ship's size, speed, and course. The ship can detect and track multiple surface contacts from over 100 nautical miles away, thanks to sophisticated radar systems like the AN SPY-1 Phased Array Radar. This gives the crew ample time to assess the situation and prepare for any necessary response. Alongside radar, electro-optical and infrared sensors provide visual confirmation of the approaching vessel, even in low visibility conditions. Simultaneously, the ship's communication team springs into action. They attempt to establish radio contact with the unknown vessel using internationally recognized maritime frequencies. The message is clear and professional. This is United States Navy warship, ship name, conducting routine operations in international waters. Please identify yourself and state your intentions. You could. If the approaching vessel is identified as a Chinese spy ship, communication becomes even more crucial. The U.S. Navy's approach is to maintain a calm and professional demeanor, despite potential tensions. They might say something like, Chinese vessel, this is U.S. Navy aircraft carrier, ship name. We are conducting lawful operations in international waters. We request that you maintain a safe distance and refrain from any actions that could be interpreted as hostile. This initial communication serves multiple purposes. It establishes the U.S. presence, clarifies intentions, and opens a channel for dialogue. It also sets the tone for the interaction, emphasizing professionalism and adherence to international maritime law. The ship's crew is trained to communicate in multiple languages, including Mandarin Chinese, to ensure clear understanding. They use standardized phrases and protocols, such as the Code for Unplanned Encounters at Sea, cues, to minimize misunderstandings. As communication continues, the ship's advanced sensor suite remains active. Radar operators track the spy ship's every move, while electronic warfare specialists analyze the signals it emits. These signals could include radar emissions, radio transmissions, or other electronic signatures that might reveal the ship's capabilities and intent. The ship's electronic warfare systems, like the AN-SLQ-32, can detect, identify, and if necessary, jam hostile radar and communication systems. These systems provide a comprehensive electronic picture of the surrounding area, allowing the crew to differentiate between different ship types and potential threats. The ship's E-2 Hawkeye Airborne Early Warning Aircraft might be launched to provide a broader view of the surrounding area. These eyes in the sky can detect other vessels that might be operating in conjunction with the spy ship, ensuring the carrier strike group isn't caught off guard. With its distinctive rotating radar dome, the E-2 Hawkeye can track hundreds of targets simultaneously at distances of up to 350 miles. Its ability to coordinate with fighter jets and surface ships makes it an invaluable asset in managing complex maritime situations. Intelligence analysts on the carrier scrutinize the collected data, comparing it to known capabilities of the Chinese Navy. They look for any unusual behavior or signs of new technology that might indicate a shift in Chinese tactics or capabilities. Analysts use sophisticated software to compare the spy ship's characteristics against a database of known vessel types. They pay particular attention to any modifications or upgrades that might indicate new surveillance or weapons capabilities. As the U.S. Navy gathers this intelligence, it's important to note that it operates within the bounds of international law. There's a fine line between lawful observation and provocative action. 
and the Navy is careful not to cross it. The presence of a Chinese spy ship doesn't deter the U.S. Navy from its primary mission, whether conducting freedom of navigation operations, participating in joint exercises with allies, or simply patrolling international waters, the carrier strike group continues with its planned activities. This unwavering focus sends a clear message that the U.S. Navy will not be intimidated or deterred from its lawful activities in international waters. It's a demonstration of resolve that goes beyond mere words. However, the carrier strike group might make subtle adjustments to its operations. Certain sensitive activities might be postponed or conducted in a manner that minimizes their intelligence value to the observing spy ship. The goal is to strike a balance between the need to complete the mission and the pragmatic reality of operating under surveillance. For instance, if the carrier strike group planned to conduct a missile defense exercise, they might alter the timing or location to reduce the amount of useful data the Chinese ship could collect. Similarly, they might adjust their electronic emissions using strict emission control or IMCON procedures to limit the information presented to the spy ship's sensors. In many cases, U.S. carriers don't operate alone, especially when operating in sensitive regions like the South China Sea, they're often accompanied by ships from allied nations. It, the presence of a Chinese spy ship adds an extra layer of complexity to these multinational operations. In such situations, clear communication between allied ships becomes even more critical. The U.S. carrier, as the flagship of the group, leads the response and ensures coordination. This might involve assigning specific ships to monitor the spy ship, while other vessels continue with planned exercises. For example, during the April 2024 incident, the USS Hopper was operating alongside ships from the Philippines and France. This multinational presence demonstrated the unified front of US allies in the region and complicated China's surveillance efforts. Allied ships also play a vital role in intelligence gathering. By spreading out and making observations from different angles, they can provide a more comprehensive picture of the spy ship's activities. Collaborative approach not only enhances situational awareness, but also demonstrates the strength and unity of the alliance. The ability to seamlessly integrate operations with allied navies is a key strength of the U.S. Navy. Regular joint exercises, like the annual Balakatan exercises with the Philippines, ensure that allied forces can operate effectively together under high-pressure situations. The encounters between U.S. carriers and Chinese spy ships occur within the framework of international maritime law, specifically the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, Yun Si Laws. Often described as a constitution for the oceans, this comprehensive treaty defines the rights and responsibilities of nations in their use of the world's oceans. Yuan Silos, which entered into force in 1994, recognizes various maritime zones and the rights associated with them. The high seas, or areas beyond national jurisdiction, are where all states enjoy the freedoms of navigation, overflight, laying submarine cables, and scientific research. Under UNCLOS, all ships including military vessels, have the right of innocent passage through the territorial waters of coastal states. This right extends to exclusive economic zones, EEZs, which can stretch up to 200 nautical miles from a country's coast. In these zones, foreign vessels are allowed to conduct activities that don't infringe upon the coastal state's rights or threaten its security. The U.S. Navy's operations in the South China Sea, including the presence of carrier strike groups, are conducted under the principle of freedom of navigation. This long-standing maritime tradition, codified in Yuan Close, grants ships the right to sail freely in international waters and EEZs. However, China's interpretation of these laws has led to significant tensions. China claims vast swaths of the South China Sea as its own sovereign territory, far beyond the limits recognized by international law. By constructing artificial islands, and military installations in disputed areas, it challenges the traditional understanding of maritime rights. China's claims are based on a vague boundary line known as the Nine Dash Line. 
This line encompasses nearly 90% of the South China Sea and overlaps with the EEZs of several other countries, including the Philippines, Vietnam, Malaysia, and Brunei. The U.S., along with many other nations, rejects China's expansive claims and conducts regular freedom of navigation operations, phone ops. The U.S. Navy upholds the right of all nations to sail freely in these waters. These operations often involve sailing a U.S. warship on a predetermined course within 12 nautical miles of features claimed by China, demonstrating that the U.S. does not recognize them as sovereign territory. Phone ops are carefully planned and executed to adhere to international law while challenging excessive maritime claims. They typically involve a U.S. warship sailing through disputed waters on a pre-announced route, often accompanied by public statements explaining the purpose of the operation. The presence of Chinese spy ships shadowing U.S. carriers can be seen as part of this broader legal and strategic struggle. While such surveillance activities aren't explicitly prohibited by international law, they contribute to an atmosphere of tension and mistrust. Although the U.S. is a strong advocate for the principles of UNCLOS, it has not ratified the treaty due to domestic political reasons. However, the U.S. recognizes many of the treaty's provisions as customary international law and acts in accordance with them. The cat and mouse game between U.S. carriers and Chinese spy ships has implications that extend far beyond the immediate tactical situation. These encounters are symptomatic of a broader shift in the global balance of power, particularly in the Indo-Pacific region. For decades, the U.S. Navy has been the dominant force in the Pacific, with carrier strike groups serving as potent symbols of American military might. China's growing naval capabilities, including its expanding fleet of surveillance ships, represent a direct challenge to this dominance. China's naval modernization program has been rapid and extensive. In addition to spy ships like the Tianwangxing, China is building aircraft carriers, advanced destroyers, and submarines. These naval forces are part of China's strategy to become a global military power by 2049, the 100th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. The encounters between aircraft carriers and spy ships also serve as a testing ground for new technologies and tactics. Both the U.S. and China use these interactions to gather intelligence on each other's capabilities, from electronic warfare systems to operational procedures. For example, the Tianwang Sing's close approach to U.S. allied ships during the April 2024 exercise likely provided valuable data on those ships' electronic emissions and operational patterns. Similarly, U.S. forces gain insights into China's surveillance capabilities and tactics through these encounters. Looking ahead, the frequency and nature of these encounters are likely to shape the evolution of naval strategy and international maritime law. As China continues to assert its claims and the U.S. responds to maintain its influence, the potential for miscalculation or escalation remains a constant concern. Confidence building measures and efforts to reduce tensions between the two navies are crucial. Initiatives like the Code for Unplanned Encounters at Sea, CIUs, adopted by Pacific nations including the U.S. and China, provide protocols for communication and behavior when ships encounter each other unexpectedly. The U.S. and China have also signed a Military Maritime Consultative Agreement, MMCA, to discuss maritime security issues. While these dialogues have had limited success in reducing tensions, they provide a vital channel for communication between the two navies. In conclusion, these incidents are a microcosm of the broader strategic competition between the world's two largest powers, played out on the vast stage of the Pacific Ocean. The outcome of this competition will have profound implications for the future of the global order and the balance of power in the 21st century.